Well, here at Jerusalem Mills, they have a woodworking shop. Let's go inside, and it's very welcoming. They have a Happy New Year sign here. And let's see, uh, I've never been in this building. And hello, sir. Hi, welcome to the joinery Hello, sir. Welcome to the joinery shop here at Jerusalem Mill. My name is Steve Anderson. I am the village joiner. And together with my wife, Leanne, we run this shop. Now, joinery is a trade that came to us from England in the 1600s, and it fell between two other trades, and those trades are carpentry and cabinet making. Carpenters built buildings. We didn't build buildings. Cabinet makers made fancy Queen Anne and Chippendale furniture. We didn't do that. Now, once your building was constructed, you might hire me to come in and put in the details that you would want. I would do things like built-in cupboards, raised panel walls, fireplace surrounds. I'd do crown moldings, chair rails, baseboards. The old saying used to be, a joiner doesn't make your house any stronger. We don't make it any last any longer, but we do make it nicer to live in. The way I look at it is once the carpenter is finished constructing the building, it's a house. When we put in the details that that family wants, we may help to make it a home. We would also um, do utilitarian type objects for use throughout the village, things like blanket chests, corner cupboards, pie safes, jelly cupboards, those type of things. Recently, I built this reproduction of a 1770s tape loom um, that my wife is using to demonstrate tape weaving. Um, it's built out of curly maple, all handmade, hand-cut dovetail joints, just like um, in traditional joinery. And a few weeks ago, I finished up making this reproduction of an 18th century toolbox. And it's just to show a contrast in different styles of joinery. The little tape loom uses hand-cut dovetails, and the toolbox is using nail construction. Now, during the period, as a joiner, I would prefer the dovetails. And it's not the reason you might normally think of. The reason I prefer to use dovetail construction is I'd have to buy those nails. And to do that box, there's 108 nails. And they'd have to be made by the blacksmith across the street. And that would cost a lot of money. Labor was cheap, so I would prefer to do those dovetail joints. And these are some examples of hand-cut dovetails that I've done laying out different projects. There's no glue in these. They're just held together by the accuracy of the joints. I have a question. You mentioned one of the items you make is a pie safe. What is a pie safe? Okay, well, a pie safe is simply a place that they use to store baked goods. Rodents were an issue in the 18th century, so we couldn't leave pies laying around on a shelf because rodents might help themselves to the pie. So the pie would be kept in a cabinet. And what kind of um, distinguishes a pie safe from other cabinets is there is ventilation in that safe to allow the steam to come off of the pies. Typically, they're made with punched tin panels um, in the doors and on the side. That way, the steam can escape. Well, thank you. Now, um, what's in your hand there? Is that uh, some kind of tool that's used? Well, this is a hand plane. All the lumber that comes into our shop is rough sawn, and we have to prepare it in the traditional method. So a hand plane would be used for that. This bench that I'm working on right now was actually from the 1750s, um, made in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. It's a joiner's bench, um, and it's as good today as it was the day that we made it. Now, what is in that block? You're cutting the wood. Is there a knife in there? Yeah, there's an iron blade, and that blade is sharpened till it's sharper, really, than a razor blade. Okay. And I sharpen that um, each time I use a shop um, to keep a really keen edge on it, and that way you get this nice, smooth. Glass. Can I touch boards. this? Yeah, sure. Well, it feels smooth as glass. 
and this is actually what we call a jack plane. We'd use a smoothing plane if it was going to be on a finished surface after we've used the jack plane. And this would be, um, this is a, um, a, what's called a coffin plane. Oh, it does look like a coffin. Now, speaking of coffins, I did do a video on coffin making. Would you do anything in the world of coffins if needed? Well, as a rural vi village joiner, I was probably the only person in this village in the woodworking trade. So chances are whatever somebody came in to contract me to do, I would probably do. In Europe, the um, kind of the guide rails of the trades were very distinct and I couldn't do something outside of my trade. Here the guild system wasn't as rigid and I could do things that were beyond the scope of my um, traditional trade. All right. Thank you very much for this tour. Uh, can you tell me where are we located and what are your hours? Okay, well, we're in Jerusalem Mill, which is right here on the Little Gunpowder River um, in Harford County. We're open every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. and always working on different projects for people to come out, learn a little bit about traditional woodworking um, and about 18th century history. Well, thank you very much, and we learned a lot. Oh my gosh, it's Goober the Traveling Bear, and he loved learning about woodworking too and how the plane works. Hey everyone, stay safe, be kind, and visit a historic site near you.